This is Ross Johnston, and you're listening to Accelerate Alaska, where we explore the competitive advantages, the systems, and the industries that move Alaska's future forward. This episode is sponsored by... This is Mike Ferris, President of Alaska Enterprise Solutions, the Xerox sales agency with offices in Anchorage and Fairbanks. Businesses who need a reliable supplier of quality office equipment turn to Alaska Enterprise Solutions. We provide multifunctional copiers, wide format printers, postage systems, and can handle all your scanning needs. And we provide professional support to keep things running smoothly. Let us show you how to reduce print costs with a free assessment. Alaska Enterprise Solutions in Midtown Anchorage or visit aesalaska.com. Alaska has 2.5 million visitors every year. And a growing number of those visitors don't want to sit on a bus or see Alaska from a large boat. They want to experience the real Alaska. Amanda Clayton tells us her journey from commercial loan officer to Alaska wild guide on stage from the tourism track. Thank you. So I guess I'm here today to tell you why I traded in my high heels for extra toughs. Why did I trade in a successful banking career to be a small business owner? Several people have already shared their stories on how challenging being a business owner is. But for me, it came to a point in my life where I really had to ask my question, what kind of quality life do I want? My kids were getting older. I have two teenagers now. And the realization came that, oh my gosh, I only have a couple more years and they're going to be gone. Do I want to continue to spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week in the office and missing out on that time with my kids? Not granted, we were weekend warriors. We would go out camping every weekend, hiking when we could. We helped build a cabin together with the help of my dad which was really exciting. I loved trading in my suit that I wore, and I had to dust this off a little bit for today, and putting on my car hearts, and going out there and and learning how to use a chainsaw to cut down the trees to build my cabin with my kids. It was an experience that uh, you just can't get anywhere else. Anybody that knows me, I'm a bit of a squirrel. I get off on tangents. So let me come back to the point that I'm trying to make is Can you have quality time? Can you have quality in money? Can you have quality in your living housing situation and be a business owner? Same in business. We want to run a quality tour. And we will say, we will give up that extra person so that we can have a quality tour over a quantity of the people that we're running through. Because we want to share Alaska, give people an experience that is unique. We're an adventure tour company. An adventure to everybody is slightly different. So my story really began when I was lending to amazing business owners throughout the state of Alaska and later into some other states in Western Alaska. And I got to see how they were living their passion. And I said to myself, if money wasn't an issue, what would I do with life? And at first, I thought I wanted to be a bread maker because the smell of fresh baked bread is amazing. I don't know if you guys have ever driven down Spinard and you can smell Franz making that fresh bread. My son goes to West, so I do that quite often. But I can't eat wheat, so that didn't make sense. Um... And so I fortunately, several years ago, got to meet my partner, Derek, who was also very passionate about being outdoors, and he had Alaska Wild Guides. And so I found myself going out on adventures with him to parts of Alaska I'd never seen. I'd never ridden a snow machine before. I'd never been on a sailing sea kayak before. And I saw that, wow, there's so much more out there to experience than what's just on the road system or what you can access from your house in 15 minutes. I was born and raised in in Anchorage, love Anchorage. I've seen a lot of what Anchorage has to offer, but (laughs) that's just a little dot on the map. There's so much more to see. And so about four years ago, I started helping Derek out by being a tail guide. When tours got too big 
and I had a day off the weekend or a bank holiday and I had the day off, I'd go out and go on the tours with him. And I was like, wow, meeting all these new people is so much fun. And they're so excited to learn about us. And I got to share my home with them. You know, and so many people are so amazed. Oh, you were born here? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was. Oh, we don't meet very many of those in tourism. There's quite a few of us out there. Um, And so my title, Wizard of Og, because we didn't know what to call me. So about a year ago is when I decided to put my almost 20-year banking career behind me and start full-time with Alaska Wild Guides. And as many business owners, we do a lot. I was the accountant. I did all the bookkeeping. I helped out with guiding when need be. I was out there doing the sales call, visiting Anchor, visit Anchorage, and all the other opportunities out there to share with people what we do. I made reservations. I also made the sandwiches for the day tours. So it didn't make sense for me to be the president or the CEO, because that just doesn't say what I do. So we came up with a really fun title, Wizard of Og, because we try to be fun. And this is a picture of me just last year for the very first time going out and breaking trail. This was from Lake Louise Lodge. We were trying to get up to the McLaren for a tour that was supposed to happen in in a couple of days and there was no trail out there. So it was the very first time out there breaking trail in four foot of powder on a machine that I can hardly ride. Let me tell you, (laughs) that was 35 below and my sandwich was frozen after four hours of being out there. But I had a smile on my face because where else can you get an experience like that? It's definitely not the office I had known. Um, So this then became my office. Many people probably recognize this as Prince William Sound. And those are our sailing kayaks, Hobie Cats, that are pretty unique out there. And I now get to visit places I only dreamt of visiting And when I go out there and I'm working, this is now my office. And it's been a bit of a sacrifice, I won't lie to you. You work 24-7. You're taking calls all hours of the day because a lot of our visitors are from other countries. So you have to be prepared to put it all in. It's all or nothing. And I wouldn't trade it now for anything. But I have to remind myself to occasionally stop and breathe um, because you do kind of get all consumed with your business and growing it is important. I traded in a very nice salary for just enough to get by because we're putting everything back into our business to grow it to that next stage. And so, you know, there's sacrifices that you have to be willing to make and you have to recognize those fears that you have and you have to ask yourself are you willing to make the leap of faith to do what your passion is be it cooking in the lodge be it writing a blog for families I mean we all had to take a leap of faith here and what better place to do it than Alaska. We are fortunate to be here and to be able to share it with everybody. I mean, we're some of the few that actually get to experience what Alaska has to offer and to share it with people. It's just the most rewarding thing I could possibly think to do with my life. Identify what your passion is, understand what your fears are, be ready to accept those fears and move on Take that leap. You can do it too. I did. And if I can do it, believe me, you can do it. I love working with small business owners. I did for 20 years. Being a small business owner is a whole new challenge. And I would love to share with anybody my experiences and information. I hope you enjoyed what you heard. If you want to see the presentation with slides and visuals, go to AccelerateAK.com. A big thank you to Julie Soppy for organizing the tourism track. I caught up with Amanda to find out what opportunities she saw in the tourism market. 
how has your quality of life changed from going in a, from an investment world to the entrepreneurial world? The big change over the last couple of years, switching from working in corporate America to working for myself, is holding myself accountable to a schedule. Nobody else is telling me I have to be up and in the office at 8 a.m. and be there till 5. So that was kind of a, a struggle for me. I was very, very used to having a set schedule. Now, being my own boss, being an entrepreneur, I have to prioritize my time not only in the office, but when I'm out in the field. If an entrepreneur wanted to get started in the tourism industry, how would should they start their journey? Getting started would be finding where the market is headed. A lot of people that come up to Alaska are coming up on cruise ships. And the cruise ships seem to have that whole market tied up. But there's a growing industry of independent travelers. And you have to look at that. What's their demographics? You know, what's their age? What's their income levels? And then match what their desired is to what there is to offer. When we first started the company, our summer activity was the sailing kayaks, which are really cool because they're unique. But a lot of people don't know what they are or how to even look for them. And it's one of those things, well, you don't know they're there if you don't know they're there. And so you know, when we started with the sailing kayaks, they were competing with the traditional kayaks. And of course, the price point on those two tours were very different. So when we uh, brought in the jet skis, we all of a sudden opened up our market. Because, you know, I hate to, to say it, but people want to be efficient with their time. They want to see the most <laughs> in the least amount of time possible. And, and sometimes with the least amount of effort. And so being motorized versus people-powered, we opened up to a, a whole new segment of clients. When are your clients making their decision? There's a big range, but the majority of people are making a decision within a week to two weeks of their travel time. And have you seen an increase in the demand over the years that you've done this? Absolutely. For, for our tours? Correct. Yeah. I've chatted with a lot of people I think because there's been attention drawn to winter activities through Iceland, you know, they've really opened up that market to winter snow. How mature would you say our adventure tour market is compared to other destinations that are similar, like Iceland and New Zealand? I would say we're just starting to develop, or we're still developing our winter and summer adventure tours. Kayaking, I would say, is pretty developed, but people are starting to look for new activities. One unique thing that I've seen in the last couple of years is the Asian market that's coming over, right? They want to say that they've done all these big adventures, but they really don't want that big, big adventure like you, like us Alaskans think of adventure. So defining what adventure means to each group. You know, there's different levels of adv adventure. People think they're adventurous, and then you talk to them, and, and they don't want to leave a bus. <laughs> they don't want to get their feet wet. And it's like, oh, well, their idea of adventure is very, very different than my idea. So looking at the demographics that are looking for adventure, looking to disconnect, I would say they're probably between the ages of 35 and 55, right? And so you look at where are they in their life cycle. Then you've got all those off-season months that these hotels, car rental places have all this overhead. We've done an okay job, I think, bringing in conventions, at least into Anchorage, during that shoulder month of October, November. But all of a sudden, all these people have come up for conventions, and there's really not a lot of activities to do. It's not enough snow on the ground to do winter activities, sports. It's not warm enough to go do summer sports. What can they do when they're here? I think there's a market for that. Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest problems that 
the tourism market here has is that when we think of vacation in Alaska, we think of adventure. Yeah. But a lot of tourists, when they think of vacation, they think of relaxation. And we don't really have, we have a lot of the adventure activities, but we haven't really focused on the relaxation. Mm -hmm. I think there is a, there is a, big opportunity for the right entrepreneur to get out there and like to start creating relaxation excursions that get people really excited. Yeah. Because like you said, people don't want to leave the bus. Mm -hmm. They think they're being adventurous by just coming to Alaska. Yeah. And so we need to start maybe catering to those adventure travelers who want the, the very soft adventure. Yes, I think there's definitely opportunity for more soft adventure. But what I'd like to see is Alaska get more of the business from those countries that are hard adventure. What are your next steps to move Alaska's future forward? I think our future is our kids. So why don't we start when they're younger and give them the tools they need to go out there and be entrepreneurs? You know, I have four teenagers. We're actually working with them and developing their own little businesses for this summer. Do you enjoy this podcast? If so, go to AccelerateAK.com to find out how you can contribute, volunteer, or even bring an Accelerate conference to your town. AccelerateAK.com. This has been an Accelerate LLC production. The future is already here if you know where to look.